Hello everyone and welcome to episode 3 in our skill system series. In the previous two episodes we set up the actual fundamentals of the skill system and how we can use it to set skills on the player and how we can use those skills to be queried to allow us to do certain things like open certain doors or in even include a double jump. So now we're going to go into the phase of building the user interface element of the system and that will lead into uh, the perks and be able to buy, buy their skills with the perks and so forth and so forth. So this episode we're going to focus on getting just a window to show. Um, so if you followed other tutorials of mine where I do something quite similar, it's very similar in its setup there. So um, hopefully some of this should feel uh, familiar. So in here I've made a user interface folder and I've already imported in some skill icons I found. Um, that'll do for our testing purposes. But you can use any images you like. Now in my user interface, we're going to create a new widget blueprint and that'll be the heads up display. And if you've seen the way I work before, uh, this is sort of the, the panel container which will contain all the various heads up display elements inside of our uh, inside of our game. Alongside that, you'll also need your skill window. So we're going to right click again and make a new widget blueprint called skill window underscore UI. And the final thing we'll need is a skill button. And these are going to be the individual skill buttons that you can click on to purchase the skills and um, view what they do and so forth. So I'm going to go user, user interface, widget blueprint, skill button, UI. So we've got head, heads up display, which is the container, the skill window, which is the actual window of the skill tree, and the skill button are the individual skills that we can assign to the player. So first thing we do is work on our skill button. So the skill button is going to be quite simple. So we're going to get rid of the canvas panel. We don't need it. And the reason why we don't need it is because you only use the canvas panel if you're worried about absolute positioning. We're not in this case. We're making a sort of self-enclosed widget, which is a, just a button. So you don't need a canvas panel. So let's put in a button. And inside that button, we're going to have an image. So I'll drag it down into the hierarchy in the panel below here. So now I've got a button with an image. Now if I change uh, this from fill screen in the top right hand corner of the viewport to desired, I'll get to see what the overall shape and size of the button will look like. Now at the moment it has no shape or size, it's just going to go by what the, whatever size the image is. For sake of simplicity, we're going to fix the size of the button. To do that, we're going to wrap it around with a size box. So right click on your button in your hierarchy and wrap with size box. Click on the size box and in the right hand side you'll see the details panel. And here you want to look at the width override and the height override. I'm going to tick these both on and set them both to 128 by 128. And then we're going to go to, down to the image and tell it to fill both horizontally and vertically, because at the moment you can see it's just filling up just the middle square here. So let's make that make sure it stretches across the whole thing. And there we have a button. Now you may notice there's a little bit of padding between the image and the uh, borders of the button. That's easy to fix. Just click on your image and you'll find the slot options for padding. Change that to zero and now the image will go right up to the edges of your button. Now. The image here is going to be a variable, it's going to change, so we want to make sure we've got a good name for it. So with it selected, change the details name over here to skill thumbnail. And the button we're going to name as well, we call it the uh, skill button. And the size box we'll leave it as is, we're not going to be changing that, so it can stay uh, fixed or, or constant. Um, and that will do for now. We'll come back to this in a moment. So compile that and close that down. Next, we're going to go onto the skill window. Open up your skill window. And this is going to be, again, not using a canvas panel. It's going to be a desirable uh, design that is not, uh, it's going to be self-enclosed. So it's not going to be using absolute positioning. So we're going to start things off with a size box and drag that in and put a border inside our side box. And the border is just there to add some color to our background. Now, 
the design of your skill window is totally up to you. You can do it however you like. Um, I'm just going to do quite a simple layout, but um, by all means, do whatever design you like. It doesn't really matter too much. So my size box, I'm going to do a height override, sorry, a height override, a width override of, let's say, um, actually, no, we don't need, do we need, yeah, let's, let's just type in one 800 here. Ooh, like so. It doesn't really matter too much. We're going to change it later on, but um, I'll tell you what we will do. We'll do a minimum uh, desired width Ooh. of 800. So tick minimum desired width of 800. Change it from fill screen to desired, and you can see what kind of shape it is. Next, in our border, we're going to scroll down to you see appearance and change the brush color here to, we're going to change it to like a dark gray with a 0.7 alpha I'm going to drag it up to the top here so it stores it for later use and click OK. Inside your border this is where we're going to put the various uh, categories and skills so in my game here my theoretical game here I'm going to have three categories uh, with three, um, three skills in each so we're going to start things off with a vertical box so wrap with uh, not sorry wrap with don't have to wrap at all to search for vertical box in the palette and drag that into your border and inside the vertical box we're going to do a text field followed by a wrap box and the wrap box is going to take its contents and uh, horizontally place them and when it reaches the end it'll go to a new line so if we were to add other skills to it it'll just go to a new line if it runs out of space so on the text field here we can change the name of this to the category name so we're going to call this one um, exploration and then I'm going to duplicate both of these under twice uh, sorry two times underneath it so let's duplicate this and this so this second category we're going to call survival and this last one we're going to call combat and again with the wrap box we want to duplicate that and put that underneath each one so each one's got the name wrap box name wrap box name wrap box and to show you how the wrap box works we're going to drag our skill buttons now into it so go to your user created in the palette and you'll find your skill button ui you want to drag three of those into your skills categories so there's one two three and one two three and one two three okay and that's basically it hit compile and we're done for here at least for now hit save and close that and the last thing you need to do is add it to our heads up display so go to your heads up display and go down to user created and look for your skill window ui and drag that into your canvas panel. Now, with it here, we can do make sure it fits the uh, screen correctly. At the moment, by default, it just sticks to the left-hand corner and makes it as small as possible, which we don't really want. So we're going to change the anchor. So anchor's over here on the right-hand side, down to this bottom left-hand one, which is where it stretches the vertical size but keeps it on the left. So do that, and then you'll see options for offset bottom, offset top, and so forth. Change the offset bottom here to zero, and you'll see that green box go down to zero. Now it's still stretching beyond it, that's because its width uh, needs adjusting, and we can just customize the width here by dragging this out however length you want it. You can see the wrap box working there as I move my width across. So we're going to leave it like so. So there's my skill window. Um, one thing I want to add to my skill window, I think, is going to add a title bar to it and how many perk points we have. So click compile here and close this. Let's go back to our skill window and I'm going to add another text field at the top of that vertical box. And let's move that to the top there. There we go. And we'll type in just type in perks for now, or perk points we'll call it. 
And I'm going to change the size of this to 40. So that stands out a bit. Okie dokie. So we're now done here. We click save and we'll close this. Back on your head up display, our skill window here is going to be displayed the whole entire time. We need to be able to turn it off and on. So to do that, we need to first of all turn it off. So at the start of the game, you can't see it. So scroll down on the right hand side with it selected and you'll find the behavior section and in there you'll see visibility. You can change this to hidden. That means it won't be rendered at the start of the game. And when something is hidden in the UI, uh, it means you can't click on it or do anything with it. Hit compile and then go into your graph. In your graph, we're going to make the function to toggle the visibility of your skill window. So create a new function and we're going to call this one toggle skill window. And with skill window, you can see the variable down the bottom here saying skill window UI. That's a reference to our uh, skill window. We're going to drag that out and choose get. And then we're going to search for and check if it's visible or not. So search for is visible. And that gives us a boolean. And a boolean being a true or false value. So if it's true, we'll hide it. And if it's false, we'll make it shown. So let's put in a branch. And then we're going to drag the skill window UI out again and choose get. And we're going to focus on false first of all. So when it's not visible, we're going to make it visible. So set visibility as our first node. And we want it to be visible. Then we want to get the player controller. And we want to change the input mode to move over to the UI. So input mode to game and UI. And that will do there. Then we want to change it so we can actually see the mouse cursor, so we can actually interact with the buttons. Uh, so drag from the set, uh, get player controller and do set uh, show mouse cursor. And tick the box to be true. So when it's false, it's going to change the visibility to visible. Change the input mode to game and UI, so it allows you to interact with the UI again. And then the set show mouse cursor will allow you to see the mouse cursor. The reason why we use set gamer and UI is because we're going to use a keyboard key to toggle it back and forth. And we're going to be using the player controller for that. And the player controller needs to be set to a game uh, input mode. So that's quite important. Next, we're going to go and do the true branch. And the true branch basically looks like the same as the false one, but it's flipped in reverse. So rather than making it visible, we're going to make it hidden. So get skill in a UI, set visibility, and change it to hidden. We're then going to take this same player controller and set the input mode to game only. And then again from here, set show mouse cursor to false. And there we have our function to toggle the skill window. Compile and save that. Okay, so that's the UI side set up. Next, we need to set up the ability to actually toggle it and call that function. So for that, we're going to go into our edit project settings and on your input modes, you want to add a new action mapping. Now I've already added mine in, mine's called toggle skill window and it's using the T key. So just click on the add button and then add a key to it or a gamepad button, whatever you want to use. And when you've done that, close that down. Next, we're going to go and create our player controller. So I'm just going to put this in the folder with the player game mode and so forth. And we'll make a custom player controller. Now the reason why you want a custom one is because the uh, default one you can't really access and do stuff with. But if you make a custom one which inherits all that stuff from the default one, you can then add your own stuff to it, which makes it very useful to work with. So I always recommend making your own custom player controller and not relying on the default one. So to add your custom one, go add new blueprint class and choose player controller from the list. And we're going to call this one my player controller. And let me just fix that spelling error. There we go. And 
we're going to make it so that the game actually uses this one. So go into your first person game mode if you're using the first person template. If not, whatever game mode you've got, you want to go into the game mode settings and change the player controller class to your new player controller and hit compile and close that. So the player controller is going to handle the toggling of your uh, skill window. Now, skill window we need to add to actually to the screen, and we're going to use the game mode to do that. So, into your game mode, we're going to open the full blueprint editor and add a begin play event. On this event, we're going to quite simply just create a widget, and we're going to choose our heads up display widget, and we're going to return value here. We're going to promote to variable. This gives us a reference to the HUD so we can access it and change things later on if we so wish and desire. So I'm going to call this one heads up display. I'm then going to tell it to add to viewport so it's rendered to the screen. And hit compile. With that done, we can close that. And now let's go into the player controller. So the player controller has access to all the input events that we've set up. So we can access that toggle that we made. So go toggle, skill window, and there's an input action event. So that's when I happen to push the T key in my case. It will open up the toggle for this. And what we're doing is going to get the game mode. And we're going to cast the game mode to our particular game mode. So first person game mode. This changes it to from a generic to a specific. And it's a good idea to do this once and only once on the begin play, if you can do so. So we can do that in this case. So let's go and begin play. Let's just delete this tick. We don't want that. And on begin play, we do the game mode cast and we're going to store the game mode reference. So promote to variable my game mode. So it's only doing the cast once at the start of the game. But that means I've now got a reference to the game mode, like so the address reference, and I can use that here to toggle the skill window. So drag my game mode out, get the heads up display, which is that which it would just add to the viewport. And then we can call that toggle skill window function that we made on the heads up display. And that's all you have to do. We're going to hit compile and push play to test it out. So I hit T. And you can see the window now appears, and I've got access to the mouse. Hit T again, and it disappears, and I return back to the game. Again, that's T, it appears, and T, it disappears. And that'll do it for this episode. So basically, we've just set up the ability to just toggle our window off and on. So now, in the next episode, we'll be adding our skills to these various skill buttons. Join us in the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash RyanLaley. A donation of just $1 a month will get access to that next video, plus many, many others from other series too. There are many other benefits such as Discord and other exclusive videos. And big shout out and thank you to all my patrons for their continued support. None of this would be possible without you guys, so thank you again so much. If you like what I do and you who haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I release videos every single week and do live streams every single week. If you have any co questions or comments or suggestions for future content, please leave a comment below and I'll be happy to read them and see what I can do for you. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.